Welcome back to Overtime Heroics MMA. I'm Mason Shatwell, and joining me today is the praying mantis, Amari Grant. Amari, how are you, brother? I'm fine, you know. Um, I'm still, I'm still um, talk, I'm thinking about my experience um, in was it Chapel and Frit near yeah, Manchester. Chapel and Frit, yeah. my, my last fight was really a really good experience. Well, let's jump straight into it. I fought on the same show as you, and I was in the same changing room as you warming up. Talk to me. You was telling me during the changing room, it was the first time in three years you were in the, well, this time the cage. How was it like getting back in there? Really, you know what? I really enjoyed it. Um, I've definitely missed fighting. Um, I've missed competing. I've missed the training. Well, yeah, as much as you can miss the training because obviously it's hard. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was. It was almost like. It was second nature. Even though I've not been in there for a long time, it just seemed like I just went into that mode. I think I was a lot more calm than, I, than I've been in previous fights. Maybe because I was just learning on the job kind of thing. 100%. Obviously, you fought a guy with a number of fights. How did you... Did you adapt your training at all for Andy? Or did you just do the same you usually do? The thing is with me... I like to, um, I, li I like to look at my opponent, but I think it's down to me really. I think I just um, work on what I know I need to work on, and I wouldn't say I've got yeah I've got my own kind of game plan. I didn't have a corner at the time. I had no coach or nothing, so I had to basically figure out my own strategy, think about what I need to do um, as a fighter. So I think it's just an, an ongoing, it's an ongoing situation where I just fine-tune myself like a guitar. I just I just tune myself to whatever I need to play at that time. So um, I keep myself adaptable. I adapt to my opponent and I think I just keep myself as um, flexible as I can. And then I try to solve the problems in the ring. I don't try to solve them before because I'm never going to know what it's like to fight somebody unless you go in the ring. With them. I never um, prejudge somebody because you, you never know what somebody can do by looking at them. Even when you watch them in their previous fights. 100%. You mentioned you didn't have a corner, but you had a lot from, well, the noise they made, you had a lot of people there supporting you. What was that like having quite a lot of people come down? It was really, it was, it was, um, it was different because I've had bigger events with less support. So it was nice to have kind of equal amount of support for the event. I've never, it's never really phased me when it comes to fighting on a big show or a small show or a small crowd or a big crowd. It's always been about the fight to me. I always take the fight as seriously as I can. So um, it was nice to have the support, but um, it wasn't on, wasn't something I was thinking about. It was more the task ahead and the... I, re I remember the day after the fight, I messaged you saying, well done on the fight. And you told me that you're looking forward to getting back in there. Is the a time frame that you want to be back in fighting by? Definitely. I want to be fighting more next year, as much as possible. Um, I'm definitely going to be on the college continues again, and hopefully there'll be a belt up this time. Um, everything that I do, it's not... When I first started boxing, I never thought I'd continue to box. It was just a one-off thing. And then my goal was to go professional. And then after I've had a professional experience, I realised that I can do more. I can do more. I can make my own events. I can open my own gym in due time. I look at things in a different way and I approach them in a different way. And I think there's space for me. It's like a niche for me to fill that gap. People that may not want to go all the way in MMA, but may want to have the concept of the martial arts with the box behind it. I think that's my kind of niche. I'm a little, it's a little different. I, I approach it differently. And that goes to another thing. I want to be, obviously do my own school and stuff. I'm working on um, Mantis Family. I'm, I don't want it to be something where it's put in a box. I want to talk about um, um, intellectual subjects, spiritual subjects, combat subjects. I want to build the young people around me to think differently and to approach life differently through this. This is like a, uh, as justifies the means. This is just a way to show them how to be disciplined and to take whatever talents they have and push on. 
the, you know, I might take a youth from the road and he may want to be a lawyer or he might want to be a chef. But if I give him that discipline now, through the combat, it will help him in, in the future. And that's what helped, that's what it did with me. I was already disciplined in my music for a long time. But the background and the place where I was from, it wasn't, it, 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 there wasn't much um, inspiration to do anything different, if that makes sense. So I feel like me doing this and doing the music, being influential and then going into the fighting, it, I put my money where my mouth is. I put my, um, I, I showed something. I showed that it, it means something. It's not just words. I think a lot of people can just portray something but not actually be that thing. I want to be that example and influence others. So it's not about um, me getting a professional um, career to do this and do that. I want to create something new. So I'm going. I'm going on. I'm going on. It, no, it's all good, brother. It's all good. I wanted to I mean, ask, obviously after the fight, you said some words down the mic, and similar to what you've just been saying. Now, is that something that drives you to help the younger generation become better in no matter what they want to do in life? Definitely. I I feel like when I was younger, I had no good role models at all. I had no one to look up to me. That would look up two that was around me except for the the local people that did music and the people that did music that gave me a good influence and obviously my family as well that did they was in and out of different things creatively but um it's so easy to be influenced by bad um bad company so influenced to go down the wrong road but i think when it came to the music that's where i got my discipline and that's where i used my passion then it came to a point where anyone could say anything and any technology can you can you can become a meme and you can be, you can go viral by not even having talent. So it kind of like neutralized it. It wasn't a, a way to get anywhere out of the out of a situation out of a bad situation. It was more of a caricature. You're you're, you're becoming a clown. You're becoming uh, um, something just to get uh, attention, and that will get you to change your life. And I felt like it devalued the. Um, it divided the work ethos, the work, um, the passion. It, it, just, it just made everything seem like you, you, you can just get things easy and quick and you don't have to talk about anything of any substance. And I felt after doing the boxing, it kind of shown people that I wasn't, what I said, the positive things I said, it didn't, it wasn't just a, it wasn't just something that I was, I meant what I was doing. I'm passionate about what I'm doing. Every word that I've said as an MC or a rapper, I meant the words and I meant the situations I was going through. I was meant to express, I'm not, I'm not trying to do it for shock. I'm not trying to do it to entertain. It's, it's more like a relating. I'm trying to relate to the people. And um, being in the grime scene at the time, remember this is 2004 when I first started and I was like 13, 14. It wasn't, it wasn't something that's, uh, that it is now, it's not commercial. It was more of a community thing. You was in certain areas, you came together with certain youths and you practice rapping and stuff. It was, it was more like a, what can I say? Like a musical army. It's like a musical cadets. That's what it was like. And um, that really inspired me. And then obviously growing up and seeing different things and learning different things, it made me get into the combat. And then I realised, yeah, this is another way to for youth to express themselves. They can do what I did with the music and probably would be more beneficial to them, to their health and to their, their mental state. It all, it all comes together. I feel like the unity, having a group of people together doing the same thing, doing the same goal and helping each other, that's what I like. I like that aspect of it. And I feel like when you do things like that, you can influence things to be better. And, and especially when it comes to the youth, they've got a lot of energy, they've got a lot of, um, they could be misguided by um, when they're young. There's a lot of moulding, a lot of things that they need to um, figure out for themselves. And I think it's just another path to do that. Um, like, like, like I was going to say, I've got my book. I don't just um, fight, I write, I sing, I do all sorts. I, I, I'm not a person to be put in a, into a box. And I think that's why, um, you may not know how to take me sometimes, but um, I'm I'm just passionate about a lot of things. I'm very creative, and I like to create. I'm a I'm a creative person, and I like to share. I like to be a part of something, and that's 
that's just that's me. I, I like to you know research things. Like my, I got I got a whole vision for my mantis family thing. I got a whole vision. I can see meditation classes. I can see um philosophy classes. I can not even like in the sense where I'm making a proper school, but the whole concept of the whole thing I'm going to put together. I'm not going to make it as a separate thing. I feel like you can go to a gym, lift some weights, or go to a gym and learn a technique, and then you go out and then that's it. Uh, I'm going to put a lot more content into that environment. Um, show people what makes me the way I am and the power in everybody as well that they can express. And it's not the same, everyone's different, but I feel like I can cultivate that within the youth. If you influence them enough, they will find their way. That's what I think. And then things could be better. You could have more events, you could have more gym, you could have more things across the, the country instead of um rising crime and people thinking that, oh, because that person's been pushed. I feel, this is another thing. I feel like if a person, say a record label, picks up a person, they'll push him, they'll be in everyone's face, they'll have the, all the jewellery and whatever, and they'll have all the fame, but they're not really pushing anything. They're just talking nonsense. And that, that gets promoted, and then the youth think that's what, that's, that's what it's all about. And then you're just in a circle, a spiral going downwards, because you just put... Um, you basically just fueling the nonsense <laughs> that sounds so sad but just if you're just fueling the, the yeah you just there's no, nothing coming from it you're just picking somebody for everyone to follow with influence that has nothing to say and i feel like the real people that have something to say and something to do they get ignored and the only way to make a voice is to come together and push it if people feel what i'm saying and they relate to what i'm saying you should contact me we can work together that's 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 what i feel whether it's music books boxing, anything. I'm here to give advice. I'm here to be that be that um option. That winners are not option. I feel a lot of people just take it as um a money making thing. A lot of people just take it materialistically. And I'm I'm looking past that. That's not what, what drives me at all. And that's why I, I think I couldn't be controlled in a certain way. Because my my goals are different. My goal isn't just to make money. My goal isn't just to to win the fights. My goal is not to just fight every two seconds. I've got I've got plans and I've got a passion for it. And I'm sorry for putting that. No, it's all it's all good. I'm look I look forward to seeing the plans you've got. I wanted to ask. Obviously, you made an appearance on a TV show a couple of weeks ago talking about your book, your fight. What was that like? I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna um. I like that's not happened before. It's happened many times for different things. Um, I was um, I was homeless for a bit last year. I think no, last or two, like a year and a half. I was going through a bad time. But instead of like, instead of like lashing out and thinking, oh, forget this, I'm not doing anything. I'm going down, down a spiral again. I just. I actually went and did some coaching and I did some voluntary work um, with a club called Pythian Club. And it was outside at the time because obviously the restrictions. So in, even in my time of need, I was helping others. And um, I remember we got told to come to the castle, Nottingham Castle. Um, we got selected. And, um, they picked a hundred influential people from Nottingham and they did a um like a slideshow where they projected all the faces on the castle one by one um of these hundred influential people and I was one of the people and I was happy I was like oh great then I think six months down the line they've actually out of the hundred people they took three or four people took their pictures and put it on the Nottingham Castle like in the Nottingham Castle gallery so that's my face and what I represent is going to be in the castle for even after I die. That's going to be there forever. So it made me think, wow, the choices I make and the things I do, I have to be definitely 100% about them because I'm not only going to influence the people around me now, I may influence people for generations to come. So, um, yeah, I've been, I've, I've, I've been on the Nottingham TV. I brought my family up there. We took pictures. I made sure they were part of the, the moment. Um, I'm used to performing, I'm used to going on like 
doing interviews and stuff. But I think it was it was more entertainment and music at first. And now I feel like I'm 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 promoting more of a purpose, something with more substance. And I feel like that's why it's it's not becoming easier, but it's becoming more natural. I'm speaking just how I feel and how I think. I'm not trying to put up a, a pretense and put on an image. I haven't got time for that. I know exactly what I'm about and what I want to do. And and it's and it's happening more and more. So yeah, I'm I'm kinda used to that now, but in a good way. Not in a arrogant way. More like it's just more natural now. Hundred percent. I wanted to ask about again the fight with Andy, obviously you used to box in ten ounce gloves. This was in four ounce MMA gloves. How different was it fighting in a lot smaller gloves than what you used to? I think the anticipation of fighting in the smaller gloves was actually harder than the actual fight. Um, I was training so hard, thinking that it would be such a different experience. So I made sure that I, um, I, I had the MMA gloves and I hit the bag. They told you not to do that, but I did that anyway, just to see if I could um, take the contact. The only thing that was hard for me was finding someone to spar. Yeah. No one wanted to spar in, in the MMA gloves. So I had to spar in the, the smallest gloves that I could get. So I think, yeah, the actual idea of it and leading up to it was much more harder than the actual fight. When, when I got hit, I think I got hit in the first few seconds. I jabbed him and then he kind of positioned himself away and then he threw a hook. And I, and I, I think it was a hook. And I think I, I blocked it, but it still went through because obviously it's not big gloves. Yeah. And I felt it and I registered it and he looked at me and I looked at him and I thought, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you now. Like I thought, whoa, if that's what you got and I was thinking it was gonna be the worst thing in the world. I'm looking at all these bare knuckle fights and seeing you know I me, mean, everyone getting disfigured. I thought, it's my turn now. <laughs> Great, okay. Is that is that what it was? Great. So I just started to unload, switch my position, and I think you that was it. He didn't. He doesn't. Wasn't prepared for that. I think because he knew I've never done it before. Yeah. He was confident that if he hit me, I might back off. So when I didn't, I think it kind of made him panic, which is the early knockout. As you mentioned earlier, you'd like to be on the carnage continues again. Would you be interested in doing another four ounce boxing fight? Um. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Um. What I, I look, I know it's not like a, I'm running a charity or nothing yet, but any money that I make, I'm going to push into my to what I want to do, the the events and the the gym, gym first, obviously. So yeah, everything I'm doing it for is is for that. I'm not. It's not like oh, I'm going to try this now, and I don't know. It's 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 more than it's more than just me just fighting. Everything has a reason. Everything is going to be put into something else. I'm investing that into something else. My time and efforts come into something else. If I didn't do this now, possibly my cause I, my students were. I had two students before I went and did this fight, and I feel like me being an example now will help them want to do something similar or whatever they want to do in, in future. Or they'll go for it now because I, the teacher, did it for himself and showed the example. I think sometimes you can say from something, but it's better to have example. 100%. Last thing I wanted to talk to you about, you mentioned to me in messages, obviously you're writing a new book. Can you talk to us a bit about what this is going to be about? Yes, um, it's basically, Exile is just the first part. I'm, I'm hoping to do about three or four books. It's kind of like a Games of Thrones kind of style. But um, yeah, it's going to be, it's just going to um, elaborate more on the first book. The first book is like it's basic. It's based on certain events that happen in this world, and then the second book it it goes into the origins of the characters in this first book. So you get more of the background information. I lightly brush on some of the characters in this book, but you get a more in depth background. It's like um yeah, like in X Men Origins when you talk, well, let's yeah. say Wolverine and stuff. But it's going to be about a range of characters, not just one character. So um yeah. Someone told me that it reminds them of like how Star Wars might have been might have begun. 
So that was a, I thought that was a big um, compliment. I've, I've had like 29 five star reviews online for this one. And um, the new one is called The Wellspring. The Wellspring actually means like the beginning, the origin, the, the, the root. And um, yeah, I'm, it's so much. I'm, I'm trying to I'm kind of pack everything into it, but it's like literally, it's going to be a bigger book than this one. The, the, this one's only 75 pages. It's only like an introduction. But um, yeah, it's going to have loads of information, loads of different characters and situations. I'm going to take my time with this. I haven't got a, a time limit for it, but I'm going to put a lot of time into it and effort. So it's a bigger book than the first one because everyone liked the first one. So the more effort I put into this one, they probably even like it even more. I'm thinking games, films, everything. I'm, I'm, I'm already... I've already got things in place, definitely. 100%, you're doing it all, and it's great to see. Before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to sign off? Any shout-outs or anything you want to make? Yeah, um, My Living Water, um, Kangen Water. I was working um, with a team that promote um, this machine that ionises water and keeps the body alkaline. Um, Mr. Nas Sumani, he basically helped me with my shorts and stuff. I think you can see it a little bit behind me. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, they're my two main people that um that help me. Um, um that's it really. There's the, um obviously my family, my dad, my mom, my sister, everybody that came and supported. Much respect to them. Um and yourself for the interview, thank you. Hopefully we'll definitely be on the show again. Um, can I ask you a question? Of course you, you can. Of course you can. Um who do you think my weight in four ounce gloves? Would be a good fight for me. Oh, for the next event. That that that's a tough one because there's quite a few guys out there that fight MMA, but I'm not sure how many would want to box. Um, no names spring to the top of my mind, but I'm sure there's definitely a few out there that would be up for it, and I'm sure Sean would put it on the show. Okay, that's that sounds really good. That sounds really good. I right, would even my chances are then. You think I could get that belt? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to say easy because no fight's easy, but I can see you holding that belt soon, brother. That's what I like to see. Thank you, man. Much well, appreciate Amari, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. And like you say, hopefully we're on the same show again next year. Definitely. And I would like you to come down. When I, when I start my, my whole Mantis family thing, I would like you to come down and we can train together. 100%, brother. I'm more than down for that. Have a great day, have a great Christmas and New Year, and I'll see you in the New Year. You too. Take, Take care. care. Thank you. That's fine.